greatness in Good evening. Hello. I can share my screen um, and pull up the the PDF slide. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll just share screen. Uh, okay, I can start praying now. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. I bless your name for you are great and greatly to be praised. I thank you, God. I honor you. I praise your name. I lift you up, for you are great in all the earth. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. I bless you, for you are to be exalted in the earth. You are to be exalted on high, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the mighty one the exalted one. Glory to your name, Jesus. I thank you, God, for just all of the blessings that you bestow upon your people, God. Sometimes we may take it for granted, but God, we are so thankful and we are so grateful, God, because you didn't have to do it but you did. You didn't have to release the sacrifice once and for all for us. Hallelujah. For us to be reconciled back to you. Our sin led us astray, but Father, you gave us another chance. One more chance. You gave us another opportunity, God, just to be close to you again, 
just to be able to dwell with you in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. In the shadow of the Almighty. And I just thank you, God. I bless you today. I lift you high, God. We lift our hands in total adoration unto you. You are on the throne for you are God alone. Because of you, our cloudy days are gone. But we can still sing to you a song. We love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We just love you, Jesus. We love you, oh God. We thank you for being the comforter for us. There's so many things, but a comforter, hallelujah, that we can just rest our face in, that we can just, just be holy and authentically ourselves as whole persons. We can rest in that, hallelujah. We can rest in and Holy Spirit just just loving on our souls just it just gives a new meaning to having a a, a whole heart and not a broken heart hallelujah but a whole heart that is filled with the spirit hallelujah I thank you Lord God I thank you, Father, for stretching us even this far. For just, we are in day 15, but you are stretching us. And we have a whole many more weeks to go. And each and every day, God, you are just giving us the strength to carry on. Each and every day, you are are providing words for our life each and every day Lord God we just relearn who Holy Spirit is to us how Holy Spirit guides us and we take deep reflection each and every day on on the person of Holy Spirit but I thank you, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you for just an outpouring of your spirit, God. I just thank you, God, for, for revelation every single day, God. I just thank you for opportunities to come away with you, God. What else will we be? without fellowship with you what else will we be lord god without the time that we spend with you what else will we be a hot mess broken with nowhere to turn but you Lord God has have just offered yourself for us to be with you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for, for just that, just to be. Because when you can be and we just allow you to be with us, it just changes the dynamic of everything. Anything that we thought, anything that we would have considered to have, it all just goes away. And we can be with you. We are radically changed. 
by the power of Holy Spirit, we are radically moved by the power and the presence of Holy Spirit. We are radically pushed forward, hallelujah, by the power of Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father. I thank you right now, God. I just bless you. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are righteous. For you alone are a, an ever-present help in a time of trouble. For you alone, God, there is nothing or no one that can do the things that you do for us, Lord God. But we don't just praise you because of what you can do, but because of who you are to us. And so I thank you. Hallelujah. I lift you up, oh God. Hallelujah. Because I want to create this time and this space, I want to open it up with thanksgiving and praise. And I want to be thankful unto you and welcome Holy Spirit in this time. Yes, Holy Spirit, come on in and be with us. Just Rest, rule, and abide with us, Lord God. I thank you for being with us today. I know that uh, there is more. I know that there is more. And so we've come for more. We've come because we are restless. We've come because we're hungry and we're thirsty or what you're going to establish in our hearts. And so I just pray that as, um, as a vessel for the Lord, that you uh, just speak through me. Huh? I just pray that it's not even me, but it's all you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that, God, you get the glory from it all. That you get the glory. Hallelujah. I just thank you for um, dusting off the, the, the bulk of the day that's on our shoulders and all that we've come into today, that we just dust it off and all of our cares of life, that we just, that it's just lifted and it just is falling off, falling off of ourselves. Hallelujah. Because as, as it's fallen off, then we can just come boldly to the throne. We can be naked before you. We can just be, uh, just be. And so God, we are not coming with some form of, or fashion, but rather we are coming uh, to you as humbly as we know how, just so that you can love on us and, and comfort us and really just give us what we need in this hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you can give us what we need in this hour. We are all coming from different uh, different things and different spaces and with our minds on different things, but we are coming now just 
as humbly, Father, as we can, just with without any pretenses. We just want to soak and be with you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for being with us. Hallelujah. There is none beside you, God. But there is none like you, God. Thank you for being holy. Thank you for being pure. Thank you for being good. We couldn't find it anywhere else. We know that we can trust that we can find it with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. As we embrace the the comforting uh, of your presence now, as we are embracing the the rest and the power that you are placing on us now as we are just embracing the reassurance that you've got it from here. I just uh, want to reverence the the opportunity to be comforted. I just want to soak in that just for a moment. Because we just don't always get a moment to rest in that. Sometimes we're on the go. Sometimes there's always something next to do. I just want to take a moment. To be renewed, casting away all um, cares or fears or uh, just releasing all of the heartache. to do that in this moment and as we do that then we can sense the comforting of Holy Spirit
I just feel a warmth of embrace from Holy Spirit as I just allowed opportunity to let go and to be washed over again. I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in the lives of those that are listening and just conjuring the heart of your people and just reminding them that you have never left. You will never leave or forsake us. Hence the reason Jesus left. Holy Spirit for us to remind us of all things and teach us all things as the scripture says in John 14 26 but the advocate the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you that's what the scripture said. And I want to take a look at the word advocate. And so, when I think of the word advocate, first I think of someone who is speaking up for another group or another person. And I usually think of advocates for like a charity event, like I advocate for breast cancer, I advocate for um, some type of wellness thing. And so when I think of an advocate, it's not always one who has to be associated with it, but it is a person. The definition is a person who argues for the cause of another, especially in a court of law. So, if Holy Spirit is our advocate, and every time we go into prayer, when we are bringing a case to God in prayer, it's kind of like a court case because the enemy is the accuser of us and so if we are bringing a case to the Lord we have an advocate who argues and recommends or support the cause the thing that we are going into about hallelujah I think about um, our unworthiness all the things that could make us unworthy but because the accuser is going to say all the things but then it's like we are not in this alone. We are not in this alone because we have an advocate who supports us. Support is so, so very important in life, not just in a court setting. It's just so much better when you have support or a support system or someone who is waiting to support you for a just cause. Advocate is also a verb. Because when you advocate 
or something, you're also speaking in favor of this thing. And so as an advocate, you're also speaking. So it's, it's a noun as a person. And it could also be used as a verb when you're speaking in favor of something. But you have different types of advocacy when you think about it. There's different types. So you can advocate for yourself. You can advocate for someone else. Or you can advocate upon like it um, supporting a system. And so like those are the three types. So you got self advocacy, individual, and then systems. And ultimately, being an advocate is about helping people find their voice. Hallelujah. Have you ever found yourself in a situation when you know that you needed support and then you found Holy Spirit was that advocate for you have you ever found yourself recognizing that Holy Spirit's helping you find your voice hallelujah I just am so grateful to God for Holy Spirit being an advocate. I think that there's also, I think that it's important to notate what it takes to be an advocate because that's just not something that you kind of just throw around. You don't just throw around, okay. I'm going to just advocate for I'm going to just do this because everybody else is doing it. No, that's not how it goes. I'm not just going to advocate just because. It really takes uh, something upon your person. If you believe that you would be you know, advocating for something, it would take some sort of skill You have to know something. And so Holy Spirit being our advocate, he clearly knows everything about us and can communicate that effectively. So some skills, I would say that this would be, you know, basic, but I think it was, no, better than basic. It would be more essential. These are like essential skills that you have and I'm just basing this off what Holy Spirit has been speaking about being an advocate and so we could also apply this to ourselves when we advocate for um, ourselves uh, for someone else or for a system so, when I said that um, you got to know something, I believe that that takes some re- some research. You got to kind of already know, and so that's a skill research is a skill that that takes time that takes um, that would take like time spent you know what I'm saying and so Holy Spirit does research and just analyzes you know our time with him he analyzes our fellowship 
our communication. And so this can be used in the courts of heaven. But what else? Just the, how about just the dynamic of a relationship? When you talk about building relationship anyway, in general, building a relationship with people takes time. And so we know Holy Spirit as a person. And so that is a skill that is developed over time, is building relationship. But that's how you get to know a person. That's how you get to know the information that would be needed to answer all questions. So research, building relationship. Um, what about negotiation skills? What about negotiation skills? When I think about it, I was thinking about the courtroom and how sometimes, you know, you go back and forth with your opponent and the judge. And so, ultimately, as an advocate, you, you might need some negotiation skills when you're advocating for something or someone you are on their side and so when you are relaying information and going back and forth with the opponent you gotta know how to negotiate terms So you got to research, got to build relationship, negotiate, and you just, I think, I think that communication just goes without saying, but I guess I have to say communication. Because I think there's a way to communicate. And so providing a narrative. I guess. Storytelling. So when you're communicating a story and in, in providing a narrative, that's what also happens in in the courtroom. That's also something that just takes place. Because when When you are stating your case, you are providing a narrative to build up the storyline. And so with Holy Spirit as our advocate, a storyline is built up based off of the research, the time spent with us. the the building of the relationship when you build up a relationship you go through different things you may go through some of the worst of times and you may go through some of the best of times that's what happens in building a building a relationship and so it really just pushes the uh, narrative for the case but oh 
Holy Spirit being our advocate, Holy Spirit knows all things. From the very beginning. And so, even before we knew, he's already known. But I just really um, love how in the scripture, the the main scripture of John fourteen twenty six. How I'm sure this was in red. I don't have the KJV in front of me, but I'm sure that this was in red and how Jesus is like talking the way that the scripture was said. It's like, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And it just, it is, it makes me chuckle sometimes how how everything is so well-versed, how it's like Jesus saying, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And we ought to recognize right there um, how clearly, you know, the Trinity is being expressed. And I just think that it's, it's something to recognize. But, um, But going back to the, the word advocate, um, that that is just that is something that that is something that we can really embrace and apply in any context, honestly. Being an advocate. But who is Holy Spirit to you as your advocate? For me, Holy Spirit advocates for me when I am in the position where I need to stand firm in my faith or when I'm in a position that seems like it's dark and dreary. I don't know where else to turn. And so instead of, you know, looking inward at myself, I would just pray. And I would just ask the Lord, what do I do now? I think another, uh, the other word that is just um, as important to kind of notate was Holy Spirit being a comforter. And so Holy Spirit being a comforter just reminds me of a warm blanket. It reminds me of having an opportunity to not be in survival mode, but rather be in a comfortable position. And so, comforter is used, um, when you use the E-R at the end, it's used as a noun, and then being comfortable is used as a verb. And the Holy Spirit being the comforter, 
I have learned to rest in him. I have learned how to do that. Um, it did not come to me at first. But that was something that is learned behavior, something I had to try it out. But I just thank the Lord for each specific role of the Trinity and I never want to seem impersonal when it comes to Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is so many different things for us. Holy Spirit, so many different things. Uh, and the first thing I'm reminded of is He is holy. But Jesus calls him the comforter, the advocate, or the helper. And so each one, though personified, is has, has their own roles. I think that's important to know the roles of each, the Father, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. And so, with Holy Spirit being our advocate, Holy Spirit being our comforter, our guide, our teacher, um, Holy Spirit just plays an important role in how we live. If we live our life under the control of Holy Spirit, we will not fulfill our sinful desires. But rather we do things which are pleasing to him. Hallelujah. Once we have become a believer, once we've fully put our trust in Jesus Christ, our eyes are opened and illuminated. Once we have intentionally allowed, allowed Holy Spirit to direct and lead our life, we can then better understand the things of God. Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. We, Holy Spirit allows us to understand the things of God. He leads us where to go in our personal life because we ought to be preaching the good news everywhere we go. Holy Spirit just sets us apart. But we're set apart to do the work of the ministry. But because Holy Spirit has done the research, he already knows what's going to be good and what's not going to be good.
Holy Spirit guides us in the hard times. We know that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. They're different. But we must know that he always knows best. So that's why we ought to align with him. I'm just thankful for the guidance of Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for truth because truth doesn't fade like the latest trend, but truth, it just remains. And so I just pray that the truth of the matter, the truth of um, Holy Spirit being our advocate or helper and our comforter, that it just helps us to form a deeper relationship with Christ and a deeper fellowship with this spirit of truth to guide us into all things. And so I submit to him for his guidance and I choose not to guide myself. But it is better, it is better that he guides, guides me. It's better that he guides us because when we guide ourselves, we see where, where that goes. I'm just um, thankful today for that. Um, that understanding and reassurance. The reflection today is um, hold on. okay. So the reflection today is understanding how has the understanding of Holy Spirit's role in your life transformed you during this journey. Or what can you do to more fully embrace his power and guidance daily? So the floor is opened up for anybody that would like to share a reflection today, tonight. I pray this was helpful in some way, knowing Holy Spirit as comforter. This has been extremely uh, refreshing. Okay. I I think about the relationship with Holy Spirit. As you were saying, it takes time to develop relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for Holy Spirit's commitment to me. Because <laughs> there are there are some times where uh I haven't yielded or listened and it's like, oh man, what I'm going to do now. Okay. 
Holy Spirit is is there to guide me back. <laughs> guide mm-hmm. me through. And um I like so I'm just grateful that it's not a oh I missed it and now I'm out here on my own. No. It's mm-hmm. That's the beauty of the love of God. It's mm-hmm. He's just committed to us. He's committed to see us as He is. Mm-hmm. Well, I think about the times like with Advocate, where mm-hmm. it, you are. You need that person, that stand-in, to speak yeah. on your behalf. Yeah. You know, whether if you've been wrongly accused, uh-huh. you've been rightly accused. It's like, okay, but I need help. I, I, I need that covering. Uh-huh. So that role of Holy Spirit to be our voice to represent us rightfully. Yes truthfully that's like okay there's peace there you don't have to sit here and wring your hands and worry you know did I miss anything that no Mm -hmm. you can there's peace and knowing he's representing you hallelujah so this 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 helps me thank you amen thank you lord Oh, good. I love that. Hey, man. Thank you, um, Misha, for your um, teaching tonight. This was this was very good and rich. Uh, and when I'm thinking of advocate, I'm thinking how I'm Adonis's advocate, my son, mm-hmm. and how and how I advocate for him for things that I know that he needs that he doesn't know that he needs, and he doesn't know how to get what he needs, and so mm-hmm. that brings that brings peace to me to know that God knows what I need before I even may know it. I may never know what I need, but God knows Mm -hmm. what I need and he knows how to get me to where I need to be to get what I need. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for Mm -hmm. being my advocate. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So good. He knows what we need before we know. Hallelujah. Man, uh, good evening, everyone. Misha, thank you for your great teaching, um, your sincerity and everything. I was looking at uh, this scripture here, and I had to jump on a little late, but I still wanted to be here. Um, John 14, 26, but the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, would teach me all things and would remind me of everything that I that he has said to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Holy Spirit just plays such an important role in our lives. And to me, it's just reawakening and, and uh, bringing more knowledge about him to the forefront of my mind of who he is and how important he is in my life and mm-hmm. our lives. And um He's an advocate. That means he speaks up for us, you know. Yeah. Uh, he, like advocates are today, he looks out for us and he speaks on our behalf and he helps us. He teaches us. He's our paraclete. He walks along beside us and he speaks to us. And um, the meditation says, meditate on the Holy Spirit as our comforter and teacher Mm -hmm. Uh, guiding and reassuring us that word reassuring just stuck out you know reassuring Mm -hmm. us in our journey of faith and i promise you i am so blessed and just 
thinking uh, I, I haven't seen the Holy Spirit like I am seeing him now through this mm-hmm. study. It is so powerful. It's what I need. And I cannot thank God enough. I just mm-hmm. thank him for being here. Thank you so much, Misha. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I've been experiencing Holy Spirit as comforter more and more and more often because I don't know, I just need Holy Spirit as comforter in my life. I need Holy Spirit as comforter to comfort my heart, to comfort my mind. To just reassure me that I'm on the right track. So I've been experiencing more and more of his comfort in my life. Well, there's no other um, any other reflections tonight. Mm-hmm. I like um, to hear about the reflection. Um, I, overall, um, and then when you expounded um, on so many things, but I just kept thinking about like he is heaven's lifeline for us. And when Jesus said that he would not leave us as orphans before he left, and it's he is so he's everything and the scripture says that he would be with us forever it says in john 14 16 he says um and i pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever that is just really i never thought about it you know in that way but he's going to be with us forever Mm-hmm. What, a mm-hmm. gift. what a gift mm-hmm. yeah amen thank you for your teaching amen thank you lord what a gift forever forever you know, the things of the the things of the world and just the day by day it's somewhere in there it says it's the fleeting things of the world are fleeting but Holy Spirit will be with us for a while ain't going nowhere Yes, he's he is our BFF. <laughs> I just this journey's been so beautiful because it's like yes, we're 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 going down this road together, you know, with Holy Spirit, and the same way that we look forward to 
hanging out with our girlfriends, you know, calling them. Let me tell you about today. But, <laughs> like, this is what our relationship with Holy Spirit is. Mm. Um, it's beautiful. Oh, man. I know it to be true. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll be a fat too. Come on in here. I was uh, looking at the daily devotion and I it had just reminded me of the many times of distress I have been in. But over time, Holy Spirit has taught me to go back to the truth. To go back to the truth of the word. And it say, ask Holy Spirit to come for you in times of distress and teach you the truth of God's word, enabling me to stand firm in my faith. And I was just thinking about the many times of distress. Sometimes I caused it, sometimes not. Sometimes it's not always my fault. But there were many times of distress. And Holy Spirit's like, okay, we're not going to believe what the world says about this, but rather we want to believe what the word says. Hallelujah. So, always find what the word says about something. A lot of times it's in Proverbs, but there are there are in other places. <laughs> there are in other places too. Mm -hmm. And so Holy Spirit is a comforter in those times of distress. Holy Spirit calms us down. And we can get a bit more anxious than necessary. But I can say my faith won't be wavered as long as I stay. Keep my face in the good book. It just won't be wavered. You can't tell me nothing else. Thank you all for um, just chiming in and providing a reflection today. I was just pray us out. Uh, if there's nothing else from anyone else. So I thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for a cleansing of the heart and the mind. I thank you, Father, for Holy Spirit as our advocate. And all that we say and do, I just thank you for the revelation that you have given each of us about um, Holy Spirit as comforter, teacher, and guide. Just thank you, Father, for all that you have given us as your children. You have just... Um, 
leveled up in understanding of Holy Spirit as advocate. And I just thank you for the opportunity to see the role of the Trinity in one scripture. Hallelujah. I just uh, pray that as we embark upon more, more uh, times, opportunity to spend with you to build relationship and just communicate on a deeper level that um, in this journey, the walk that we are in with you, that we just continue to allow uh, allow you to make us whole and to make us rich with your love and that we continuously rest in you being comfortable with that we rest in your peace and in your love that we are just resting so that we don't have to be filled up with so much um, so much busyness so much on the go so much stress but rather we just take a pause we take some time to breathe and just be and just be with you so I thank you we love you we just thank you for all that you are doing I pray um, for each and every person that made it today I pray Father that you Provide, provide us with um, your comfort and your love in this time and tonight and in this season. And I just pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. You too. Good night. Have a great night, everyone. Love you guys. Love you. Love you guys.